So another area where these optimization problems comes up brings us back to discrete time dynamical systems. Okay, so let's say we had a discrete time dynamical system that described the population of some fish, right? So we have a fish population. All right, and we want to know what's the maximum number of fish we can harvest from this fishery. All right, so the fish population grows according to nt plus one, so number of fish in uh, generation t plus one. So this is number of fish at time t plus one is a function of the number of fish at time t, right? Number at time t, or that function is given by, let's say, 2.5 n sub t times one minus n sub t. Oops, let me move this down a bit so it doesn't get blocked by my face. Okay, so n t plus one equals 2.5 n sub t times one minus n sub t. All right, so it grows according to the logistic equation, which looks like this, which I don't remember if we went over this or not, but we'll, we'll certainly go over it again uh, this week. Okay, and then we have a harvest term, right? So minus h times n sub t, okay? Where this is the number, you know, amount harvested, right? So h is some percent times the number of fish in that population at time t. You take them out of the population and they can no longer like reproduce and produce the next generation, right? We're just fishing them out and they're no longer in a the population. They're, they're now gonna be, you know, turned into cat food or whatever. Okay, so the maximization problem here, or the optimization problem is, uh, what is the maximum number of fish we can sustainably harvest, right? So we don't want to just take all the fish out on the first generation, because then there won't be any fish left for the next generation, right? We want to take out a lot of fish, but not so many that we then kill the population and then we can't fish it again next year. What is the maximum of fish we can sustainably harvest? Okay, so this is our optimization problem. Okay, so the trick with this one would be to wait until this uh, population is at equilibrium and then we'll be able to harvest this H amount, right? So this equilibrium point is gonna depend on H and then that will tell us, okay, well, when H is this number, then the equilibrium, stable equilibrium will be stable no matter what, right? I'm gonna pull out this H amount, but it's still gonna be a stable equilibrium. So that's kind of the where we're going with this. So for this problem, we're going to first look for the stable equilibrium point, okay? So recall that that means we want to solve this equation, right? n star equals 2.5 n star 1 minus n star minus h n star, right? We want to look for the number n for which, you know, n star is equal to f of n star, right? The update is the same as what I started with, right? And then once I'm stuck at n star, then no matter what, I'm always gonna have the same number of fish each generation, right? Because the update rule gives me back the same number, okay? So this is all review from maybe a month ago at this point, but hopefully it'll come back to you, okay? So to solve this equation, we have to move everything to one side. So let's move it all to the left. So we have n star uh, minus 2.5 n star one minus n star plus h n star equals zero. Okay, and then I'm gonna factor out an n. So we have n star one minus 2.5, one minus n star plus h is equal to zero. Right, so this tells us right away we have one equilibrium point at n star equals zero is one equilibrium, right? Which makes sense if we have no fish 
then the next year we should also have no fish because how do you get fish from no fish? That doesn't make sense unless we were adding them into the pond, which we're not. Okay, so then we're solving this. 1 minus 2.5, 1 minus n star plus h equals 0 to find the second equilibrium point. Okay, so then uh, what we should do is we should just move everything to the right-hand side. So we have 2.5, uh, 1 minus n star equals minus 1 minus h, right? So just move everything back to the other side. And let's also move this minus 2.5 to the right-hand side. So let's multiply this through. So we have minus 2.5 plus 2.5 n star is equal to minus 1 minus h. Right, so then let's move that over. So we have 2.5 n star equals minus 1 minus h plus 2.5. Right, so this gives me 2.5 n star is equal to uh, 2.5 minus 1 is 1 1.5 minus h. And then we're left with n star equals 1.5 minus h divided by 2.5. Okay, let me just check the book to make sure that's what they got. Yeah, basically the same thing. Looks a little bit different, but it's the same number. So this is our other equilibrium point. Okay. And it depends on h. N star, we'll call this n star 2, and we'll call this n star 1. Right, depends on h, which isn't surprising, right? Because if we change the amount that we harvest each generation, that should change the equilibrium amount of fish in this pond. Okay, so let's just switch over to some plots so I can just demonstrate what this looks like. Okay, so let's switch over to, let's look at Desmos first. So I have 2.5x, 1 minus x minus hx, so that's the, uh, the form I just had, right? And then the equilibrium point is the intersection of this update rule with the identity line y equals x right so here it says when h is 0.5 my equilibrium is 0.4 right and the other equilibrium point is always zero right so it's always going to intersect at zero and then we're going to move this uh basically this peak around or this intersection around as we change h okay so if i change h right if i harvest uh zero then this is the equilibrium point it's determined basically by uh, the first part of this equation, right? And just zoom out a bit so you can see it, right? So at h equals zero, equilibrium is here. If I increase h, then I'm basically pulling that equilibrium down, right? Which makes sense because the more fish I harvest, the less I will have at equilibrium, right? Because I'm harvesting more. So if we harvest, you know, if I keep harvesting, then eventually, this tilts down, right? And now I only have an equilibrium at zero. So if I harvest too much, then my population will always go extinct. And that's not good, okay? So let's say we just have like h equals 0.5, right? Just some random intermediate harvest rate. If I look at the uh, cobweb diagram for this, right? Starting with like 0.1, we see that we go towards that equilibrium point, right? And this is basically always gonna be the case when we have Two equilibrium points, the one that's not at zero will be stable, and the one at zero will be unstable. Okay. So we, we'll show more. Uh, yeah, next week, next couple of videos will also show how to compute stability using derivatives. Uh, but but for now, we'll just rely on that cobwebbing, right? So we say n one star equals zero. It's unstable and n2 star equals 1.5 minus h over 2.5 is stable when it exists basically when it doesn't exist then actually n star 1 uh, becomes the only stable equilibrium but when this one exists this is the stable one and that's the unstable one based on the cobwebbing that we just showed okay the uh, cobwebbing right that's my my proof of why which one's stable and which one's not stable. Okay, so let's get back to our optimization problem, right? The optimization problem asks, what is the maximum number of fish we can sustainably harvest? Right now we found 
the stable equilibrium is this population, which depends on H, right? So that's kind of giving us our clue that it depends on H. We want to find the max, the max harvest, which is also kind of a function of H. And so we want to determine what is the maximum number of fish we can harvest. So the fish amount that we harvest, we said was H times NT, right? So at equilibrium, right, we can harvest we harvest uh, H times N star fish, right? That's based on the form of this harvest term here, right? It's H times N when, uh, when we're at equilibrium, NT is our equilibrium, N star, right? So then the amount you harvest is H times N star, right? And so we'll, we'll just mark that it's two uh, because at equilibrium zero, we would harvest zero fish, which is also true. But we're going to figure, we're going to concentrate on the stable equilibrium, which is at this non-zero equilibrium point. Okay, so our function, let's call it P of H, is going to be H times N2 star, which is H times 1.5 minus H over 2.5. Okay. Great. So we have successfully set up our optimization problem, right? So we have figured out we want to optimize or maximize P of H, right? The harvest with respect to H. All right, so to do that, we have to take the first derivative of P, solve for when it's zero, that tells us where the equilibrium or the critical points are, right? So let's do step two find critical points of P. Okay, so let's solve. Okay, so P prime of H. Let's use the uh, chain rule here, or sorry, the product rule. So this one has derivative one times 1 1.5 minus H over 2.5 plus H times derivative of the second one. Well, this is just a linear function basically with intercept 1.5 over 2.5 and slope minus 1 over 2.5. So the slope here is minus 1 over 2.5. Okay, and so then this gives us our derivative, which is 1.5 minus h minus h over 2.5, which basically gives us 1.5 minus 2h over 2.5. Okay, which I suppose once we set this equal to zero, we can solve for it, right? So we're looking for P prime of H equals zero equals 1.5 minus two H over 2.5, right? So basically we multiply through by 2.5, we get zero equals 1.5 minus two H, which tells us that two H is equal to 1.5 or H equals 1.5 over two, which gives us 0 0.75. Okay, so this is the only critical point of our function, right? Only critical point. So it's a good chance that this is the uh, maximum, uh, the H that gives us the maximum harvest. Well, let's double check, right? Check if max the uh, second derivative test. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to black. So P prime of H, we said was 1.5 minus 2H over 2.5. So the second derivative, right, is going to be, let's just rewrite this as 1.5 over 2.5 minus 2 over 2.5H, right? So then we can see, okay, derivative of that is just minus 2 over 2.5, which is negative. So because it's negative, that tells us that P of H is concave down at H equals 0 0.75, right? Concave down everywhere, but specifically at H equals 0 0.75, right? P double prime of 0 0.75 is equal to negative 2 over 2.5, right? Since that doesn't depend on H, which is negative. So it's concave down at H equals 0 0.75. Therefore, uh, local max. 
at this point, right? It looks concave down, and we know we're at a critical point, which means we know we're at the top of that little hill. Okay, so now we have uh, basically solved this problem, right? So this means that the maximum harvest occurs at h equals 0 0.75, right? And the value is p of 0 0.75 equals h n star, which is 0 0.75 times, what was n2 star? That was 1 point, no, 1 1.5 minus h over 2.5. So let's write that down, 1.5 minus 0 0.75 over 2.5. So that gives us 0 0.75. 1.5 minus 0 0.75 gives us another 0 0.75 over 2.5. Do I have this in the book? I do. So great. Do this out in the calculator. You'll get 0 0.225, okay? So then that gives us our optimum our fish this is 2.225 fish would be the largest value okay so we found where we achieve maximum harvest at rate 0.75 and the maximum harvest value for this problem All right so if i go back just quickly to the plot All right let's look over here first if i make h equal to 0.75 you'll see that, yeah, the equilibrium moved down, but we're harvesting more of that equilibrium, right? So even though H equals 0.5 gives us a higher equilibrium value, we're harvesting only half that equilibrium value. So we're not actually harvesting as many fish. Whereas when H is equal to 0.75, right? Now we're harvesting 75% of 0 0.3, which is a bigger number than 50% of 0 0.4, right? So if I go back over here, 0.75, iterate that. It's still a stable equilibrium. And then if we were to you know, write down this value, right, that'd be h times, uh, was it 1.5 minus h divided by 2.5, right? Uh, I guess it just tells me the value here, right? So at h equals 0.75, the harvest value was 0.225. If I move this back down to 0.5, right, even though the equilibrium value was higher, the harvest is smaller, okay? And so that's why we had to do this optimization process because intuitively you might think, okay, I'll just get the highest equilibrium value, but it's equilibrium times the amount you harvest that gives you the number of fish collected. And we wanna maximize that number, not maximize the equilibrium. That'd be a different type of problem, okay? And so, you know, in the next couple of videos, we'll get back into discrete time dynamical systems and we'll start thinking about these more as good models of, of different biological phenomena.